Can we start? Yeah. Dear Chairman, dear moderators, it's now a great honor to give you an overview on stemless shoulder replacement. Where are we? Where do we go? Uh, maybe not just in Europe, but uh, I believe globally. These are my disclosures. Those stemless implants definitely have advantages. They preserve the humeral bone stock. They give excellent access to the glenoid. For example, if you compare it to humeral resurfacing, they are independent of neck shaft deformities. No stem related complications, of course, because there is no stem. They are easy to revise. We have convertible systems available and we do have more than 15 years of experience now in Europe. The indications usually are primary OA, post-traumatic OA, osteonecrosis, sometimes rheumatoid arthritis, instability arthropathy, and post-infectious arthropathy. More important are contraindications, and it's always been said that proximal humeral bone loss, poor proximal humeral bone quality, a large intramedic canal, or cases where the proximal metaphysis is distorted are contraindication. However, I would say that poor proximal humeral bone quality is a relative contraindication. I will show you cases where you can use the humeral head as an augment to actually fill the proximal metaphysis and more or less recreate um, the bone stock and implant a stemless component. So we do have two, two different uh, designs available. The impaction system, as you can see here, you resect the humeral head, you prepare the metaphysis, you insert, in this case, a nucleus, and then the humeral head is applied onto the component. The other kind of fixation that is on the market is the screw fixation. And this system uses a trunnion that is placed onto the resection area and fixed with a cage screw. And then the humeral head is applied onto the trunnion. So what about short to midterm results of stemless implants? As you can see here, uh, pretty high numbers. Uh, the follow-up is between 0 0.5 and uh, 6 years. And you see that the constant, constant score for anatomical stemless arthroplasty ranges between 65 and um, 86 points. Uh, the revision rate is between 0 and 11. There's one company who... Uh, uh, deals with uh, ceramic heads um, uh, with a stemless shoulder replacement. Um, there are already some data published, but of course we need to see in the future if these ceramic humeral heads have better wear properties compared to metal prosthesis and therefore uh, decrease uh, potential glenoid problems in the future. So if we compare now stem versus stemless components, this is a study that looked at uh, the Eclipse versus the Universe Reverse, uh, the Universe uh, 2 system, sorry. And uh, these uh, two implants provided the same and good clinical outcome at uh, five years. Um, they also looked at these patients at two years and there was no deterioration uh, of function over this uh, time period. Overall complication rate was 13.8%. There were no humoral related complications um, within the stemless group. So they concluded that stemless is really a viable option if it's compared to stem thesis. And this study actually showed a significant um, reduction in operative time and uh, reduced um, uh, blood loss when stemless is compared with a stemmed component. Uh, however, the functional scores and active range of motion was the same. We already have long-term results available of stemless components, as you can see here, uh, between 7.8 and 10.5 years with a constant score between uh, 62 and 69 points, revision rate between 0 and 50. This is probably one of the first cases we ever did uh, with a stemless, treated with a stemless component in 2006. It's a 62 year old uh, male at this time. He had uh, cortisone induced osteonecrosis. He was treated with a hemi uh, as a stemless uh, component, a screw fixation system. That's his two years follow up. And that's him at 10 years follow up. He has actually excellent range of motion. No, uh, rele uh, no relevant um, glenoid erosion and a stable component. Uh, he is um, on for the opposite side. 
So if we compare uh, screw fixation versus impaction fixation, um, since these are the two fixation mechanism most of the current prostheses are, are dealing with. We looked uh, in a study uh, in two consecutive groups, uh, Eclipse versus Cytos, and we found uh, overall subjective shoulder value and constant score, no significant differences between both groups. We also looked radiographically around the implant uh, with regards to loosening, and we also looked, of course, on venoid side, and then we compared both groups. And the only difference was um, that we found more calca resorption. Um, other people might call it stress shielding. We call it calca resorption um, on the in the group A seven uh, patients displayed this. And, and none in the group with a screw fixation. So it seems that uh, the screw fixation uh, has a lower chance that you get calca resorption. Calca resorption is usually uh, not really massively progressive over time. In many cases, it stops after a while. But of course, it's a question uh, in terms of the longevity uh, of the prosthesis. There was a, about two weeks ago, there was a discussion on um, I link it in, and I'm usually not the one who is posting a lot. I read a lot, but I don't post a lot. But as you can see here, they talked about calca resorption, and in fact, uh, in one case, a significant amount of calca resorption that might even in the long run jeopardize the stability of the implant. And the question did arise where did it come from? And we already uh, proposed uh, in uh, 2000. Um, to mechan a three mechanism for this kind of uh, radiographic phenomenon. So it could be polyethylene humeral impingement leading to uh, humeral notching and then wear. So meaning that the polyethylene component impinges against uh, the, the bone distal to the uh, humeral head. It could also be a different load distribution, uh, respectively a different rim loading. So those heads that uh, are actually fixed onto the resection area might distribute the load better to the peripheral rim and therefore um, causing less uh, stress shielding compared to those a humeral component that are that have a, a kind of a gap between the uh, nucleus uh, or the metaphysical fixation and the head itself or it could also be differences in the humeral glenoid mismatch but i can tell you um, none of the stemless component is free of um, uh, medial resorption, as you can see here, it can also occur in the eclipse. So I believe that this uh, humeral impingement of the polyethylene component could be a relevant course. We talked about humeral bone defects. Is it still an indication for um, a stemless component? Um, we published a technique in 2017 where you can use basically the humeral head uh, to fill uh, the metaphysis and uh, get a good bone stock to do a, a stemless fixation. And how you're going to do it, you resect the humeral head, as you can see here, you debride and you uh, curator cyst. You measure the dimension of the cyst and then you uh, turn the head around um, and you impact it into the void. And then you um, re-resect the humeral head and it gives you a very strong um, uh, resection surface and then you can just place your trunnion in this case and use a cage screw to fix uh, the trunnion and finally apply the head. This is how it looks like as you can see here uh, with a, a good and stable fixation uh, of the humeral component. So what about revision? Um, if you compare uh, failed stem versus failed stemless uh, components, this is a study that looked at 18 versus 26 patients. Average follow-up was 24 months. And they found uh, overall better scores for patients who had primarily had a, a stemless implant and were revised to a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty compared to those who had um, a stemmed implant and had to be uh, revised, and the surgical time was, of course, less with uh, a revision of a stemless. 
What about uh, stemless reverse implants? Uh, in fact, there are not so many on the market. This is a, uh, these are the first short to midterm results of the test system, as you can see here, with a 1.5 to five years follow-up uh, constant score between 55 and 65 percent with a very low revision rate. And in fact, we do have uh, one long-term study also available uh, eight years uh, with a small number of patients, constant score from 61. So I think this is something that companies will work on in the future uh, to not just provide uh, short stems, but also stemless components. So to summarize, stem versus stemless implants provide comparable results at midterm. First long-term results of stemless components are available. Different design features need further investigations. Revision of a stemless is in fact easier and might lead to better outcome. I think we need here more studies. However, the effect of convertibility of stemless, but also of uh, short stem components has yet to be determined. Thank you very much for your attention. And I really would like to invite you to come to Paris 7th to 9th of July uh, to join the Paris International Shoulder Course. Um, and I hope I'm going to see you there. Thank you very much.